the media fellowships, they give you the opportunity to, to be a science media person for between four and seven weeks. It could be broadsheets, online, or it also could be broadcast. I really actually wanted Countryfile, to be honest, <laughs> but I got absolutely no qualifications to be on Countryfile. So I ended up with BBC Science Unit down in Broadcasting House. Um, it, was, it was when uh, Broadcasting House had just opened. Everything was squeaky clean and nice and new and everybody was getting to know how things worked. So you didn't feel quite so much out of your depth. So I did four, uh, four weeks online with the science guys. Then I had to be their roving reporter up in the, the science festival at Aberdeen, which is really good fun. Literally, you are the BBC's reporter, me, me and this other guy. Um, he, he did radio first, and then we swapped over, and then I did radio. So we were both up there sending in stories down the wire, as it were, um, for, for the news online. But then when I got back, I then did four weeks in radio, mainly Radio 4, helping production. That was in the good, good old days when we used to have Material World, which has now been replaced by Inside Science. And you really did get thrown in at the deep end and get your hands dirty. But you also got the chance to be a reporter and do some packages and things, you know, like play real um, radio reporter. And actually, now I can't get enough science communication. I, I prolifically, or certainly at the time, wrote uh, all sorts of strange and weird, wonderful stories about how English originated in Turkey and Gobi fish, how they were separated when the continents all um, separated. So I continue to write, for, particularly for the BBC, and in fact, as I say, I've just got a, a feature up today on HIV, because it was HIV um, World AIDS Day yesterday. And as I say, you know, I've, I have developed love of media, particularly radio. I love doing uh, small pieces for those. But then I started, because you do the radio, then you start to get easy with it, comfortable. So I started then doing a bit more TV. To the point now where I've even been in um, one-hour live TV debates about Ebola and what the international response should be to it, which is, if you'd have said that to me this time two years ago, I, I would have said absolutely no chance. I still haven't done a breakfast sofa. Every time they ask me, something's happening the day after and I can't clear my desk and I, I, it's got to the point now where they're not going to ask me any longer. So it's a shame, really. It can be very demanding. You know, some days it literally is from around five in the morning, sometimes as late as 12 at night. You can be doing nothing but interview, TV, radio, radio, TV, for lots and lots of different outfits. And you've you kind of have to do it, otherwise, you know, they will find somebody else and they may end up finding somebody who's a bit <coughs> crazy with their ideas. It's definitely rewarding. So we've seen with the Ebola outbreak, certainly what the scientific community have been saying has made politicians stand up and take note. I mean, it helped that there were a few cases in America, but, you know, I think the general consensus is more needs to be done. It helps spread facts, not fiction, you know. Again, Ebola virus, you're not going to cure it with spider venom and vitamin C. But these things get out there. And if you don't help the hacks out, as it were, somebody else will, and that somebody might have a totally different agenda.